The outlook for COP21 and the Paris Agreement that will come from it is cautious, cautiously hopeful in the following sense. It represents an improvement over um, arrangements that have been made to date. The likely outcome of the Paris Agreement will be an agreement um, among uh, the vast majority of countries in the world to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And it's going to be done through an aggregation of intended promises, intended contributions um, by those 147 countries. Now, if no agreement were reached and no country took any action on, on climate change, then the likely increase in world temperature um, over pre-industrial times would be four and a half degrees centigrade. But with this agreement, provided that all the countries come through on their intended contribution, then that ink temperature increase will be reduced to three and a half degrees. Now, that's the good news. Countries are coming together to do something. The bad news is that science tells us that we really have to bring down this temperature increase to two degrees centigrade. So the agreement would only take us about 40% towards that, that goal. Um, but I think we need to look at this as a situation where uh, we, we need optimism in order to uh, take us to the next step. Um, it is just an initial step, but um, there will have to be follow through on, on the COP21 agreement so that the intended contributions are ratcheted up over time so that we can um, fully realize the necessary goal of climate change mitigation. As for red, um, red and forests have a crucial role um, in the climate change agreement in the following sense. Forests and tropical deforestation account for anywhere between 10 and 15 percent of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so forests are in, an important part of the problem and therefore a key part of the solution. And this next agreement um, ought to be, um, ought to have very strong provisions for red, but that's not absolutely guaranteed. The Coalition of Rainforest Nations made a statement in September that it is absolutely necessary that an agreement be produced that gives a very strong place uh, for red. Um, but again, this is, is not guaranteed. Um, the language of the current draft document uh, makes it very clear that the land sector is absolutely crucial, which is an important step. Um, as yet, there is no specific um, language on red, but that may happen in, in the coming weeks. Whether red or mention, is mentioned or not, uh, the crucial point is a much bigger one. The failure of red to date to uh, fulfill many of its goals, and, and the reason why red has, has moved along very slowly, uh, is, is that it is a reflection of humanity's overall ambivalence uh, and indecisiveness in how to tackle the problem of climate change. So if there is a good agreement coming out of Paris, and especially if it has binding provisions, uh, then we stand a chance of um, having Red uh, make the contribution that it needs to make to overall climate change mitigation. Finance is potentially a, a very significant uh, roadblock. 39 of the countries that have declared their intended contributions to climate change mitigation have mentioned red as um, a, a part of what they intend to implement. And all, most of those 39 countries have stated that uh, finance is a crucial issue. And I'll explain why finance is a crucial issue. Essentially what RED is, is um, it requires funding so that um, people who are being compensated uh, to keep forests standing can be motivated to actually do so. And the opportunity costs of foregone forest clearing um, have been estimated um, at anywhere from $8 billion to uh, many fold more than that. 
So that is the amount of money that um, experts believe is necessary in order for RED to function. But to date, the amount of funding produced for RED is a small fraction of, of that annual amount of at least eight to ten billion dollars. And in fact, the Green Climate Fund that has been formed in the last couple of years and that may end up being a, a primary source of funding for, for RED has only produced ten billion dollars to date, not annually, but, but to date. So um, financing is, is quite a significant problem. But if um, the Paris Agreement is a strong one, um, then we stand a chance of having governments around the world uh, mobilize funding in the amount that, that is necessary. And ag again, the crucial point is this, and it's a much larger point. We're at a point in history where we've reached a, a biological tipping point. Climate change is a very serious threat. And we need a corresponding policy tipping point that matches the urgency of, of this biological tipping point. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the steps that humanity has taken so far towards addressing climate change have been ambivalent and in indecisive. What we really need coming out of Paris is not only an agreement, a strong agreement, but a, a commonality among all countries in, in committing themselves not only to the agreement, but to expanding their commitments over time so that ultimately we can reduce the predicted increase in global temperature to t 2 degrees uh, centigrade.